Welcome to Max VA Disability, Black Hawk Brian here. The video topic today is statements in support of your VA claim. I recently had a question, individual now member, thank you very much, asked me, well, first of all, he said, hey, look, I got all my paperwork together. I got all my buddy letters and Nexus letter and this and that. He said, do you have an example of a statement? You know, when he said that, because the first thing I would have asked was, wait a minute, is he talking about a buddy statement or letter? Is he talking about a Nexus letter? But he clarified that. He said, no, I need a personal statement. Is he talking about filling out a VA form 21-4138, better known as 4138, and putting on two or three sentences saying, here's my life history? Or was this person talking about a personal statement where you type up a nice memorandum for record, whatever format that you want to do it in? So here's the form 4138 statement in support of a claim. If you read it up the top of the instructions, use this form to submit a statement to support a claim. There is another form, the VA form 21-10210, a lay slash witness statement. On the instructions, the second sentence says, use this form to submit a statement as a veteran slash claimant or someone writing on your behalf to support a claim. This document is three pages long and it gives you plenty of room for you or a witness to make a lay statement. A personal letter, telling your life story. Let's take a, a condition, let's say for instance, your back, your lower back, something I'm familiar with. And as my lower back got worse over the years, my quality of life changed and it made me grumpy and I had to take a lot of Motrin, so I had belly aches and uh, next thing you know, I've got uh, GERD and I've got to take Prilosec for that or whatever drug the doctor's prescribing these days. So, and I'm telling that story. Well, my response was, hmm, you don't really need a personal statement if you file your claim correctly. And what am I talking about? Back in the day when I used to file standard claims or what I call a standard claim today, I didn't know what fully developed claims were. I'm, I'm talking 15 years ago. I didn't even know you could do an intent to file. Uh, so I was losing money there. I would go in and just file my claim and just as I got evidence, put it in front of the VA. And then hopefully I got the number, the biggest number I could get. I'm, I'm like, I guarantee you tens of thousands of people watching this video. You're thinking, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Just turning in paperwork and hoping I get the biggest number back. Well, versus that personal statement, because when I figured out what a fully developed claim is, I thought to myself, that's about the same time I found out what a personal statement is. I'm like, you know, I don't need that. Because when I walk into that CMP, I'm going to have my personal statement in the form of medical documentation, nexus letters, buddy letters, you name it. I'm going to have everything so organized that I'm not going to need to tell my life history. I'm going to show them my life history. And that's the difference. That's the Black Hawk Brian difference. That's the five step process. That says, you know what? I don't need to tell anybody my story. Imagine this. Hey, CMP examiner, let me tell you everything there is to know about me, just in person. So what? Bend over, touch your toes. What? Yeah, I need to see what your range of motion is. So you bend over, they measure you. There's your number. That's it. I don't care how good you talk or how good you write. It doesn't matter specifically for the musculoskeletal system. Other disease states, you may consider it, but I will tell you right now, there's nothing that takes the place of medical records and nexus letters from your doctor, from your own doctor. Let's see what the VA has to say about this. So nowhere on VA.gov do I see where it tells you to write a personal statement. What it does talk about is that 4138 statement in support of a claim, when to use the claim, when you want to submit a VA buddy statement or other statement from someone with firsthand knowledge of information you will you believe will help support your request for VA benefits. Let's go to the online tool. Scroll down, it says, what kinds of documents should I upload to support my disability claim? Federal and state records. You could include copies of federal and state records. Well, I'll tell you what, if you go to my website, get on that membership, you will include these records. Your military medical records, personnel records, so on and so on. Your private medical treatment records, X-rays, doctor's reports, medical labs, test results, everything. Black Hawk Brian method, you will include all those. Supporting statements. If you're claiming a disability for an injury or illness that you 
don't think we have in your military records, you'll also want to upload statements that support your claims. These statements should be from people who know about or who you've talked to about your claimed medical condition and how and when it occurred. That's from other people. That's not from you. You can ask for supporting statements from people like service members who served with you, your family and friends, clergy members, law enforcement officers. But nowhere in here does it tell you to write a personal statement yourself about you. So I personally don't hold a whole lot of credence in a personal statement. I've never used one. The only statement that I ever typed out and made like a memorandum from record style, this was years ago when I had a decision that reduced my rating. This chief warrant officer was highly upset because I had everything in order. And whatever the process was back then, I typed that letter. I went down to the regional office. I submitted it, probably turned it in with a 4138. Next thing you know, I'm getting reevaluated. And boy, that's when I got really smart on the 38 CFR and how to take that CMP. Any additional forms needed to support your claim. In some cases, you may need to turn in one or more additional forms to support your disability claim. Let's click on there. And just as an example, you can say, do I need to turn in any additional forms? Well, if you're National Guard or Reserve, it tells you what you need there. If you're looking to claim uh, PTSD, it tells you here. If you get to this point, stop talking to anybody. Go to your VSO. Go to the regional office. Talk to somebody with the VA that's accredited and ask them what to do. But here's the information. And just to reiterate, I'm not looking for clients. Once you purchase that membership into the website, you're done with me because those videos carry you all the way through the process from start to finish. Everybody's got an opinion. That was my opinion on personal statements. Uh, I just never did one. In the past, I didn't know about them. And then when I did find out about them, I'd already developed this other system, this fully developed claim, that five-step process that when I got done with it, I didn't need a personal statement. I had my personal statement ready to go. It was everything in my records. And that third module, it talks about filing a claim. And people say, well, filing a claim is easy. Well, the way that I do, it's a little more complicated because I want to make sure that there is no need for a personal statement because I turn in everything that I've built up to that point. I turn it into the VSO or the regional office. I hand carry it. I get a date time stamp. You know what with? 4138. So that's what I'm saying. When you get to that point, you're kind of done. When you go into the CMP, you take those records that I show you how to get and how to build and how to get organized, and you walk in and you hold your head up high, if you can, and you talk to that examiner and you go, hey, you got all this stuff, right? You see all this? Because I'll show you how you tell a story in front of a CMP examiner and they have to listen. So till my next video, Blackhawk Brian, out.